Hi. Today I want to talk about some very powerful capabilities of using the Fill tool in Clip Studio Paint. One of the most common reasons for needing the Fill tool is when I'm laying down color and specifically when I'm creating my base flats um, for coloring. Now for today's explanation I have specifically decided to use an image that um, is not a very nice image. It's very easy to create your base colors if all the lines are neatly done and uh, inked very well. But as I zoom in on this uh, particular uh, scan, we see we've got artifacts, uh, so different kind of colorings, and as we would expect, the, the lines are anti-alias, and those kinds of things can cause real problems for some fill tools, but in Clip Studio Paint they have very powerful tools to deal with this. Now, in tutorials about uh, painting or coloring, you will probably see that they will select a brush and then they will start coloring it like a color, color book um, and just paint in the colors and do a little bit better than I'm doing here. One thing to notice is that Clip Studio Paint has a transparency. So you can select on that and instead of having to erase, you just use the transparency color to remove that color if you've gone outside the lines. So that's kind of nice. And so if that's the way you want to color, that's fine. But you might want to know about the fill tools. Now the first thing that you want to know when you select the fill tool, if I look at the subtool palette, um, there are several subtools, refer only editing layer, all layers, close and fill, paint the unfilled area. They could be named a little bit differently in the version of Clip Studio or Manga Studio that you have um, because they've changed these names a little bit over time. But I'll show you what they do. Now, um, the first two in particular refer only editing layers and all layers um, really just uh, deal with the settings. Um, so they are really just convenience um, tools. So they're really the same thing, but they're uh, convenience they're set to either refer to all layers or just to the um, layer that you're editing. So that's the first thing to notice is that we don't actually have to fill on the layer that we're using as our outline. So here we have our line art on close four on one layer and it's set to multiply so the color show through um, but we're actually going to color on the layer below it so your fill tool needs to be able to reference one layer and color on a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all layers. So we're going to use all of the layers to actually determine the fill. Now you can just refer to a single layer. So if you look underneath multiple referring, there's you can use all layers. You can use a specific reference layer by clicking over here on a particular layer. I can select on this lighthouse and it'll set it as a reference layer. So you could have any number of reference layers. Um, you can also have selected layers and layers in a folder, so you can control this very powerfully. But in the most basic operation, we're going to be using uh, all layers as our outline. Now the next thing that you want to notice is that this little um, kind of uh, circular thing here, when I click on that, that sets it back to the defaults, the defa default settings. And so it has a number of options here, but I'm going to turn those off just to show you something. Anti-aliasing we're going to turn off, area scaling, and uh, closed gap we're going to turn those off. So um, we have a red color that we're going to try to fill with, and um, what we expect is it's going to take into account the outline of this leg, and when I click on here it's going to fill there. So. This is the kind of fill you might get in most basic programs. Um, and as you look, uh, there's all kind of speckling going on, especially as you get toward the edges, so that just doesn't look nice at all. And then another problem you have, if I were trying to fill in this area here, well, as everybody's seen, you've probably, if you've ever tried to fill before, it flows out. And so those uh, t attempts to fill just do not work like we want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the default settings. Um, again, this is the all layers subtool. And so what's going to happen here, I'm going to, it's turned on the closed gap, so it's going to close the gap as long if the gap is fairly small. 
and it's turned on anti-alias and it has area scaling so now if I click to fill oh that looks much nicer not quite as nice here so we can look at that in just a second but let's look at the leg right here now for the leg the things that that helped out here was this anti-aliasing allowed us to realize that there are pixels close to the color um, that we selected the white and it will um, realize that we're going to anti-alias a little bit and so it matches those colors some. Now let's talk about area scaling. I'm going to go to the outline and I'm going to drop the opacity down and take a look and see the red has actually flowed past the edge and you don't notice that because again the artwork is on top, the line work is on top and so that's what it's trying to do. The area scaling is allowing you to actually flow past the line so that you don't get uh, the white edges. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. To better see this I've uh, gotten rid of the red color and I've turned off area scaling and now what I'm going to do is fill with the same color. So the outline is black, I'm going to fill with black. Now when you do that, notice that we get some kind of white edge there. So um, that is because it's trying to fill and match the colors of the pixels and it sees ones that are not, qu can't quite tell when it's gotten over to the edge. So what we want to do instead is we want to have this area scaling turned on and now it fills in past that edge. You can change the value of the area scaling. Let me uh, drop it down here. And let's go all the way until it's negative and we try to fill and you get this um, looking at the edge around these pixels that is not going to fill in. Now the actual uh, look that you'll get depends upon some things like the color margin as well. As I do the color margin it will match pixels up to a certain color. And I'm not saying that you would want to use this all the time, but this is what the area scaling is doing. It's, um, if you will, changing the, expanding or contracting the selection. So that's just to show you what's happening, but in general you want to keep the area scaling positive and it allows you to fill in like that. Okay, so look at, let's look at this part of his leg here and we try to fill in that area. Now, it doesn't do a great job because this is a pretty messy scan, um, but you notice that it does close the gap. Now, if we want it a little bit better, in fact, all we need to do is increase the color margin and click, and now we have a much nicer fill. Now, from that point, you, it might be easiest just to um, pick a paintbrush and fill in these other areas. but it's, the fill has already started out and got most of your work done for you. Now another very powerful fill tool is this one that's called Close and Fill. And what you'll do is you'll use a lasso tool and you'll select an area that will fill. Now again, I've select here and I've used the default settings. Now the first thing that you want to notice is the target color. In this particular case, we have um, white for the scanned layer, the reference layer uses white. Now the default it says only transparent. So when I lasso an area to fill, it won't fill it in because there's white in that area. But let me select here only white and transparent. Now as I select an area, it fills in those areas which are completely enclosed and only within the area of my lasso. Now we have a little overlap here and there just again because of the speckling. If I had reduced the color margin, that's what's happening. Color margins uh, overlapping a little bit there. And again, it's because of the, the poor scanning. Now, notice that as I do my lasso, even though I've got a complete loop, this area is not going to get filled because it's not completely uh, enclosed by the referencing layer. In other words, the black outline. But if I go and I select here, now the fill area will be uh, filled in. It does have a closed filled area, fillable area. And again, there's that little uh, messy kind of area. So what you could do is just be a little bit more careful there in that particular area. And now it fills in like we want. 
Similar would be this area here. Again, if it's a little bit messy, I can undo. Be a little bit more careful in that area, and it fills in. So that's a way we can get through and filling in some of these harder to do areas. So the last fill tool that I want to show is this paint unfilled area. Again, I'm going to make sure that the defaults are reset, but notice again that its default is only transparent. So I'm going to change this to only white and transparent. And so what we do is we just paint over the area that we want to fill. Now it has to be completely contained by the black, and there we go, it fills in. Now watch this when I look at the next part. I'm going to try to I zoom in and try to fill in this area here. Now it doesn't seem to fill in, and I'm going, what's going wrong? Now what's happening is there's a gap there. But you don't know that there's a gap because it doesn't have anything that says gap over here. Now if you wanted the gap to show up, you could click on this uh, wrench, and I could choose close gap. And if I select close gap, the gap will be closed. So that's one way that it could be done. But it, by default, that uh, closed gap area is not going to be there. So let me undo the color and turn off the gap, and now it won't color. So how can I fix it without that closed gap? Well, what's happening is the color margin is too high. Because this, as you are painting here, it's trying to fill in the white. But then the color margin is taking anything um, 80 values from white, and so it sees this light gray and sees that as a gap. So if I just reduce the color margin and fill in, now it fills in. Well, maybe that wasn't quite a, reduced it a little bit too much, so we just kind of find an area, a happy medium that fills in both of them. And actually, if we reduce it and I turn on area scaling, then that's really all we need to do there. So that's another way that you can solve it. <coughs> so there's one other thing that I want to show you. Notice that we kept changing the target color to only white and transparent. There's actually another way that you can deal with that um, if you're willing to uh, change your uh, layer. So for example, let's say that I want to keep this layer with white and black. Um, so I can make a duplicate of that copy, duplicate, I mean duplicate of that layer. So let me duplicate that layer. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, Convert Brightness to Opacity. And now for that layer, all of the white has been turned transparent. So now if I want to um, do the fills, I can leave it as the default settings and we can go in there and paint in and it will fill appropriately. So that's what I wanted to show you about fills. Um, there's even more powerful things that you can do. Just play around with it some and you'll uh, see those things. I really love uh, Clip Studio Paint, but it's actually so powerful, so many different features that sometimes it's a little bit hard to, to figure everything out. So I'm creating some tutorials to help people. So check out my playlist, Clip Studio Paint How To, for more uh, tutorials on Clip Studio Paint and uh, other playlists for other tutorials. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.